Well, in today's session, we're going to talk about word of mouth. It's a big area in marketing, and it can convey a lot of different things. We traditionally think of someone going and telling their friend about your business, but obviously with the internet, there has been a whole bunch of new options. Think about Yelp. Yelp is a classic website that we all, or most of us, probably use uh, for reviews, especially of local businesses. So I typed in barbershop, went in here, see the barber. Okay, let's let's go in here. And uh, there's there's obviously reviews. Let me ask you this question: When you, as a consumer, do you look for only positive reviews? What if you see a negative review? What do you do? Is do you take it for really what it is, or do you assume this is someone that's never satisfied? Do you ever read the engagement that the owners will answer? To people, especially on negative reviews. This is a good practice. You wouldn't imagine how many businesses actually have lots of negative reviews and yet they never even check uh, their online reviews and so it just keeps going and going and going and, and they don't realize how valuable of a resource correcting these issues could be for gaining customer service. In the consumer product world, let's just think, uh, I, I used this example earlier of Nespresso which is uh, Nescafe's answer to Keurig and they had to hire a marketing firm to figure out do, at, at what point do people uh, consider purchasing this product and a lot of it actually had to do with them evaluating the reviews of other alternatives so we can go dig in here into reviews uh, overall pretty good reviews here and there there's some negative ones but uh, there is some engagement from the manufacturer and, and again, I, I, I've mentioned this before, but engaging positive reviews is a way to develop more word of mouth advertising. We always think that we're only going to deal with negative people, but what about uh, investing time in the positive people? So <clears throat> th this goes back to this uh, buyer journey map. And by the way, this is uh, an added element into your marketing plan that if you can put that in there, kudo points to you, but um, considering your product, your business, your service, whether it's a restaurant, consumer good, an app, uh, at what point do they evaluate and consider the various options out there from competitors? And a lot of times this involves looking at reviews. It involves listening to people and listening uh, word of mouth. But I, I want to Pause real quick here, and, and let's let's define a couple things here. When we think about word of mouth, there's really two areas. The first is traditional, or just simply, um, well, word of mouth. So we'll, we'll just put T for traditional here. But uh, now, online, the internet, the web, is a huge area, and and dividing this into two parts, the question always becomes how it, it, I mean, it's easy to look up reviews and to engage reviews and to start a Facebook page and to get your customers to create uh, hype on there. But what do you do about real life people offline who go and tell their friends good or bad about your business? What's the best way? What is there a metric? How do you find those people, how do you find the level of word of mouth from them? What would you do? I, I give you a, a second here to pause to just think. Is there a, a tool or is there a way that you could find that out? Well, this you, you may have seen this before, but if you haven't already thought of it, the classic way Is that how I spell referrals? Nope, I'm a bad speller. Um, referrals. Who referred you? If you ask that question. So that's why when you go to a lot of businesses, they have little surveys, and they ask, how did you hear about us? And it may not be a paper survey. It may be an employee that walks right up to you and says, how, how did you hear about us? How did you find us? Who told you about us? Where? Who? These are the questions that help you to find this side of the equation. What is 
who are the people and where are they at that are talking about your business and it's not even being recorded. It's not even online. You can't find any uh, uh, re online review sites or anything like that. These are just people that in their own life and everyday interactions with family, friends, they talk about your business. Uh, think about reviews directly on your website. How effective it is to have a positive review on a website. What's the problems with this? Well, if you've probably already thought of, I mean, you as a consumer, me as a consumer, I can instantly, you know, on Earthstrike Gear, I could instantly think, okay, uh, they're just putting the positive ones and they're screening out all the negative ones. This is so biased. And uh, there is some truth to that. To go to a, a third party, uh, let's think about uh, the example I have with student housing, Reno International House, and um, we always wanted to compare and see, okay, there's a lot of places where people can stay, especially the international students, and uh, so we compared student housing places around UNR. Here's the Republic, uh, probably many of you know them, just up the street here, and they've got reviews on here, but again, as I sort through them, there, I can get a feeling for there's a little bit of bias in here. At, at what point does this become real to me? And so if I type in the Republic Apartments Reno, I can see there's actually a more, a, a third party, a neutral place like Google Reviews is going to have a much less biased approach. They're going to have more negative reviews in there. But then does a negative review completely turn you off? There's another question to ask, is how, and are these engaged? Here's a response from the owner. That's a very good thing. If you don't do anything else, but you just engage negative and positive reviews, you have automatically have free advertising because now you're creating more uh, engagement on the internet and you are hopefully turning detractors into positive people that add to your brand. So I'm going to give you a tool. This is just a, a helpful concept to think about. Uh, it's called the Net Promoter Score. Uh, might sound a little academic or mathematical, but just think of the concept at least. And imagine that you're handing out a survey and you have these questions like, on a scale of one to ten, do you, uh, what do you like about our product, or what, how would you compare this with other products or services? So we have these scales, and you can take any. Uh, you could go through online review sites. You could go through your surveys in your restaurant or that you physically talk to people. And what you're doing is you're taking the percentage of promoters. These are people that are positive about your business. Minus the percentage of detractors. And this equals the net promoter score. Okay, This is how many people in your business, how many customers and outside people that, that purchase are actually promoting. And your goal is obviously to get that score up. So in this case, they, they kind of define it as a promoter is a score of 9 to 10. You know, if you had a 1 to 10 scale and 10 was the best, 1 was bad, uh, that makes sense. Passives, uh, even though this may seem high, uh, I mean, there are obviously some issues that they have that they wouldn't have graded you at 9 or 10. And detractors are lower. So you could take any scale. It doesn't have to be 1 to 10. You could take a survey. You could add them up. Or you could go through reviews and go through uh, stars and, and count the stars and look for these people and follow, them, follow up with them. But then this, this leads us to an interesting concept that has now become a, uh, quite a big buzzword today in marketing. And let me pull it up. So um, let me just clear that out. Uh, is influencers? Oh my gosh! There's so much stuff out there on the internet about how to find influencers, how to develop them, and a lot of it really is scams. Like you're paying money. A lot of these are paid influencers or ideas or systems or programs or get-rich-quick schemes that try to get you to pay money for influencers. But what if you didn't have to pay? What if you already had people following you that were giving you thumbs up 
and you just simply needed to develop them. They were already in your, uh, your social media and various elements like that. So um, I, I use this as an example with the Reno International House. I'm the content creator here. And one of the things I like to do is constantly on, on our posts, pull up so you can go to any post you have. If you create a content or just post a picture, an article, whatever it is, you're looking at engagements. And one of the most valuable uh, engagements that you're going to look for is right here, shares. How many people share this post? They took the time. They saw this. They, they, they were impressed with this content so much that they actually shared it on their page with other people. It's easy for anyone to like something. You just click there and like. But to share it, you got to actually think of someone to share it with. Or you're, you're putting it on your, your wall as well. But either way, they're, they're being vulnerable. And shares are an important part. So finding those people who share, finding those people, of course, that like. Maybe they unlike. Maybe they uh, stop following the page and following up with them. These are the way, this is the, the process nowadays of how online influencers are developed. I have students that always ask me, how do I find influencers? Well, you know, some people in our class probably know more about this than, than others, and they're already engaged with this. For me, I just look for people that engage in the online content, and then I talk with them. I don't just like what they like. I don't just approve or give them a thumbs up. The same could be said for Instagram. You can go through your Instagram page and look through and find who are following you, what, who are sharing you, all that type of stuff. And so that leads us to a way of developing influencers. And those influencers are these people right here. These, uh, not detractors, promoters. They're the people that promote you. They're the, the ones that uh, are your brand advocates throughout the whole process. And so sometimes it's just simply talking with them. It's simply rewarding them, giving them a coupon code or welcoming them, welcoming them back. Uh, and, and those people become more and more engaged with the business. They become, uh, as we say on a buyer journey map, they're in this, this final stage, their experience becomes so positive that they lead other people to start the process over again. So uh, this is just a real quick overview, a real quick snapshot at uh, developing word of mouth advocates, both online and offline. Offline, like I said, is really just gets around to how did you hear about us? What, what brought you in today? With the International House, we always ask people who told them. With uh, Earth Trek Gear, it was the same thing. And a lot of times we want to dig in, down and deep and find those people. And those are the people that are going to be the ones that are, are advocates. And we want to reward them for that. So as you think about this, build this into your marketing plan. And if and when someday you come up with your own business and you're starting the process, this is an easy way without hardly, with, with no money at all, you could actually develop brand advocates. You have to start with someone. You got to get some people in the door. But once they're there, they start posting reviews. They start talking to their friends. And you want to to engage those people as much as possible because they're, they're already customers. Whether they're good or bad customers, they're already customers. Just work with those. And um, we will move on to the next lecture once we uh, start soon.